were wild and happy. Showing the breeze with the wild grease. Hello. Hello. Welcome, welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back to the podcast. Shooting Hi, the breeze Bri. with the wild geese. Hey, Bri Bri. Hi, Laura. How are you today now? You look great. Oh, thanks. Yeah. I do try. Although it's one of those outfits where it's like, you know, it's tight, high waisted. So it looks nice when you're stood up. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, look at the nips. Well, nipples are in France. But then when you're sat <laughs> down, it's like, yeah, I know. Do you know? <laughs> yeah, sure. I'm also like a big blue blob today. It's great. The old sit down <laughs> crunch gets us all with the high waisted gear. It's true. It's true. Isn't that what How happens? How are you? Are you still mad at me? Why? Because you wouldn't give me crisps. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> driving long. I'm doing the driving and, you know, you need to be nourished when you're driving. Nourished. She just ate a whole, what was it? 170 grams of Oh my God. Crisps what are you, the fucking calorie police? <laughs> Listen, sweetheart. I work out. No, I'm joking. No. Yeah, no, I am 10 years younger. My metabolism is true. I, I, I wasn't yet. hungry. I, I need to just stop eating when I'm not hungry. Yeah, but you're the very one to be like, oh, you know, complaining and this and that, and then turn around and be like, give me them. Give me one. I want some. <laughs> it's impulsive. It's ADHD, impulsivity. That's the thing. I have to grab things and put them in my mouth. Yeah. So explains your whole sex life. Yeah. So uh, how was your week, huh? Um, grand. Yeah. What, anything exciting happen? Um, not particularly. I went to dinner. Oh, um, you know, I had a dinner with the said. Oh, the, uh, as part of Talib Bio, um, I was invited to a an artist sort of artist dining experience by Deirdre Mahoney is an artist who designed the menu based around food and security and sort of sustainability and things, you know. And it's and she made everything though. She oh, made wow. all the all the um crockery, the plates, the cups. Oh wow! Yeah, and all the and it was in the like the Gregorian um center in you know the. Gregorian? Gregorian, like the... Oh. Sure, it's King George. Is that how do you pronounce that? Gregorian. Yeah, Gregorian chant is what I know. Yeah, well, it's the same word. College. It's after King George V, who he was the king at the time when all that part of Dublin was built, you know, the, <laughs> the <laughs> all this, the really fancy parts of Dublin. And, okay. Um, so anyway, that's... How was the food? Yeah, really good. I Although you brought home that dessert, I wasn't too gone on that well, dessert. No, sorry, well, now the, Deirdre. The marzipan had, uh, well, she wasn't the cook now, she's the chef. She hired a chef. Yeah. And it was like servers. And yeah, marzipan just ain't the one, man. But anyway, the whole point was that she had, bent, she had people yeah. for, you know, from all walks of life. There was like a dietitian, there was an artist, there was farmers, there was, you know, people that are interested in food. And, um, it was mis- recording their conversation. So I liked the vibe of the like, come dine with me vibe because I really liked that. I think I love, I think I'd love to go and come dine with me. But um, I just like chatting to strangers. What did you make? Oh. Bit of fish. We never eat fish in Ireland, do we? We talked about that, actually. Did we? we talked because well, the first course was about seafood. Was was seafood. It was lovely seafood, sort of like a seafood mix with a flaky pastry and some sea oh. spaghetti. Okay. So, what are you working for? Yeah. <laughs> and... Um, so then we had to talk about fisheries and things. And the guy beside me really knew a lot about fisheries and all the history of. But your fisheries in Ireland, been like our, our fishermen were just completely pulverized in Ireland, that never supported and destroyed. Oh. And <laughs> Whatever trawlers, happens on the docks stays on the docks. Really. Yeah, but like it's, it's pulverized. A, if you think farming is, is brutal, uh, fisheries is worse. I'd say so. And yeah. um, I feel like fish get such a bad rap as well. It's like, oh no, I won't eat meat. I eat fish though. It's like people are... A little less attached to a fish. Yeah, I suppose. Because they got so. those cold, dead eyes, you know. <laughs> they always kind of look as in like, what? Yeah. The fuck do you want? You, you know, know like they do it by tonnage. Not very know, warm. Like, well, they're cold-blooded. Like, well. We've talked about why why do Irish people, uh, why did the Irish send their best fish to France? Like, we don't get the lobsters and the lovely white fish and the lovely kind of. Oh, I don't know, because the French are, they're more European. Exactly, like, they'd say yeah. like, but the fish, the French have a, a culture for eating fish. We don't really. So fish for no, us. No, of course so we feel like we don't deserve it. We don't so deserve it. That's why I, I made that point. Things. We don't deserve it. We actually, we'll we eat potatoes. We're yeah, we'll stick with the spuds now France. and the bit of beef and that's that. And then we're saying, I also made the point, because uh, I'm a comedian, you know, I was making people laugh. I said, your fish was like a torture thing. Just on a Friday, you'd get it and it's like a form of torture. You've got to eat that old smelly mackerel. <laughs> and I was like, said, Laura, I, I knew I was a lesbian when I, Good Friday when the scent of mackerel wafted down the hall <laughs> mammy cooking it in the oven you didn't mind I it like, hmm. yeah <laughs> 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 uh, 
So yes. So, so Good Friday was a good day for good, you. Good day yeah, for me. Like I don't know what it is about Good Friday. No, it's just not. really resonate with it. Yeah. You know, like I just can't wait to get, you get stuck into the fish. Like face, no, <laughs> no knife and fork. Yeah, you just start spreading the fish apart. Bones, you know? cut. <laughs> <laughs> Bones cut in the throat. Yeah, yeah. Sucking out the brain. Slow down, Rita. <laughs> <laughs> you're nearly choking on a bone yeah you're, 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 it's bone. a long time since you choked yeah. on a bone Rita. actually it's a long time since I choked it's on a bone a horrible myself. feeling when there's a bone in your throat has anyone know? ever made you suck a strap on <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no <laughs> how did you go from fish to that I'm trying to have a serious you're conversation about, about fishery about, here you were talking about bones in the throat <laughs> so I was like I don't know just some I don't know some like studs might be or, like, no kind of like I told you I'm not it. that experimental in bed me neither me neither but I just thought like <laughs> some yeah. girls disappointed there yeah, yeah yeah I'm gonna have to up my game even my, my bag of uh, my bag of tricks is at home though in the, in the wardrobe what bag of tricks I've got a few things I collected over the years alright what like sex toys yeah whips and oh puffs shit and, okay yeah so many. where was that when we were like, fucking <laughs> yeah. let me let me yeah, my, I mean, hope she didn't found it I can't find it so maybe she did throw them out throw them in the bin what bag of sin no bringing the dildos in to get blessed you know the hot water bottle up, 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 up to knock <laughs> I meant to say the holy water up to knock. <laughs> Why are you nodding at me? Because <laughs> nothing. What's this? <laughs> Trying to cue a joke, is it? No, no, I just what? Delivered better before. No joke. <laughs> no, no, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> your mum's fa- found your bag of sex toys <laughs> and take them up to knock to get them blessed. I will tell you a funny story about holy water. You know, I think the funniest thing about ho- um, the Catholic Church, you know, I like uh, the rituals are quite interesting, aren't they? The whole holy water thing it has to be water that's blessed by the priest. Yeah, my dad has like, do you know those massive jugs? Mm. Like he has like big jugs of it. My dad has big jugs. That's probably where I get it from. Yeah. <laughs> to but uh, actually, water. this is Kiki Naarsh, this uh, necklace. Beautiful. We're going to have her as a special guest. I guess that'll be come out as bonus episodes for y'all. But um, Both yeah, so episodes. you know, the way, so holy water and... Uh, you know, because you don't see many um, you know, COVID now to put a stop to that, putting your hand in the holy water fountain. So I don't see yeah. it much anymore. But we all have it in our house and the, the sponge is ha- dead dry at the <laughs> yeah, moment yeah, yeah. anyway. Like it's dry as, stop dry as it my up. crack at the moment. People stopped topping it up, didn't they? Um, my dad has a big yoke of it, right? And I, I know this is so bad, but like uh, when I was cleaning out the house once, like I had ordered like a it. mini skip. No, I just fucked a load of it out. Oh Lord, the holy I, water. I, Where I is know. it from? It's ju- in my opinion, it's just water, Bruno. But and like, where was it but from? in fairness, if I had like collected moon water or something and someone threw it out on me, I'd be like, how dare you? But, but it was from Knock. Oh no, Magic Horse. No, Knock. Because it was like the big ones that he oh, put yeah. in the car, you know? Well, Mammy was in the Holy Land. I don't know time. why he has them. And she goes, because they're in there. You, because you you keep them of holy water. Like yeah, but he, they're just sitting there in the room. Like it's not like he's filling the thing up outside. You know what I mean? He might one day. He might want them. When oh, he will. Yeah. Cry. He also has five different bottles. Well, maybe of, when he's on his deathbed, um, he'd like get the water. It's in the get the holy water. I saved it. From yeah, I'll, like I'll gone. drown him in it. I could <laughs> fill a bath with it by now. I'm like, Dad, I'll put your corpse in a bath of it, and you'll be very ready to go or whatever it does. But he's also the man that has the five bottles of vanish. Um, Stain remover. Five bottles of it under the sink. I worry now. I worry, yeah. Because he just, like, I don't anyway, know, Mammy, Magi- stuff. Can I tell my story about Medjugorje? No, I or need to me. rant about my father's spending habits. <laughs> and Mammy's in the Holy Land. Such tight purse strings, Daddy's in the ho- Mammy's in the Holy Land. Daddy's playing golf in Dubai around the same year. It's funny, like the modern Ireland, Daddy Golf and Mammy Brain. But, um... Yeah. So she's family. in the Holy Land and she came home with the, she brought some holy water from the Holy Land. So when we were at my nephew's, uh, con- con- it was his baptism actually. And it was the first time I was ever at a baptism, which was in Black Rock Church, where other families were there because it's so Fancy. so many people need to be baptized at the same time. Oh my God, I have a baptism so story for you as well. Yeah, so um, I remember there was, so we were all sitting and, and you know, just as he puts the holy water the priest goes and puts the holy water on the baby. I can see Mammy nudging, nudging Daddy, and Daddy went up the aisle and opened up his little bottle and poured it onto the baby's head, Adam's head. Well, like a hip flask of fucking holy water. A small bottle, yeah. And then <laughs> sat down in his seat, casual as a my God. Like, and the priest just looked shocked. We knew the priest because he's my married. He's not married. His <laughs> brother is married to my aunt. And anyway, okay. so... At the end, he was a bit taken aback, but I just thought, I mean, so the, there was an American guy with the other family who said to me, what was in that bottle? <laughs> yeah. What was that about? It's just so hilarious. Jesus has come. 
But the, the priest was a bit like, you're not, I said to Daddy, oh, you're not really supposed to do that. Like, but he's like, that's water from the Holy Land, though. Yeah, sure. It's good water. water. Yeah. Yes, that was quite You should be able to throw in whatever you want. Do you know? But Get an old fucking cauldron going. The priest likes to do it. Yeah, but like fucking Eye of Newt, whatever else. Just fucking St. Bridget's pubies. Like whatever you want to <laughs> fucking pubies. get stuck in there. But actually I have a baptism story for you as well. So this is co- like County Limerick, right? And I'm at one of my cousin's um, kids' baptism as well. And, you know, they've got to wear those little white dresses, you know, and they're all buttoned up and cute, mm-hmm. whatever. But, like, the priest has to anoint the child with oil, like, on the head and on the chest and yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And, like, they couldn't get the dress down. Like, they couldn't, like, kind of... And I was up, because I was the godmother, and I was up mm-hmm. kind of over looking at the whole situation. And then he was, they were struggling with the dress, trying to get the dress down. He just turns to me and he's just like, usually I don't struggle to get the dresses down. <laughs> and I was like, "You're a priest." <laughs> He's like, "Usually, he said something along those lines, or usually I'm good at getting the dresses down, or something like that." And I was like, "Probably Sorry? talking about just innocently talking about the babies." He but looked at me and winked. <laughs> Don't. And they grabbed my tit. <laughs> sure. Just one. He was just like, "Usually that's good for me." That's oh. slander. <laughs> oh. Ah, yeah. But I mean, I think Irish traditions are quite funny. But there's another. There's some good stories, uh, like you know where. Holy Communion, for example, at a wedding one time, um, this another American guy, I was doing my comedy actor, because he was like coming up like he didn't, he was never at a Catholic mass before. He was just at his cousin's wedding, Irish cousin's wedding. So he didn't want them at the mass and he, everyone started going up for communion. So he just followed everyone up like, oh, no. well, what's going on here? Did he do the, the, <laughs> the, the <laughs> yeah. vampire sleeping thing? No, he just basically put out his hand and got the communion. <gasps> And he just like didn't know what to do with it. So he didn't <gasps> want to eat it. He's like, I don't eat that. So he put it in his pocket. Oh, mother of God. And then when he came to the reception of the wedding, he's just like, you know, everyone's <laughs> sitting down at the table. And he's like, oh, yeah. He just threw it onto the plate. And this fellow was like, what? The body of What's Christ. That? Where'd you get that? Oh, the, you know, we know the priest gave it to me. He's like, you, you, can't, you can't just put it there. Like, you know, he just, he goes, it's a piece of bread, man. Relax. He's like, it's not even bread, it's it wafer. Outside. You might as well stick a so bit it of was a big, um, HB vanilla ice cream. Wouldn't that be a good scene in the film, I think? Yeah, yeah. yeah the disrespect anyway, of I, Eucharist. Like, I was like, it's not Spider-Man. He's like, you know, it's Spider-Man. And like, you know, just like, it's just a piece of bread. And everyone's like, you touch it. You take it outside. Spider-Man? I was like, it's not a spider, man. Oh, gotcha. I thought you said, he's not Spider-Man. I was like, I don't yeah, get I know, it. I kind of just getting it. the Eucharist off the priest. I just like. remember when I read my book, wrote my book once. Yeah, so that was a good dinner Your and book? a good experience. That that was a fun week, wasn't it? I like bringing Daddy saying, guess where I was? In the <laughs> Gregorian Society, you're having a posh dinner, all the artists. He's like, like, I can't yes. talk right now, Breed. I'm up to my knees yeah, yeah. or up to my elbow and cows. Like, I'm after buying tr- three cattle. He got um, some cattle off the neighbour now, bought them. Nice price too. Okay. Yeah. What are you looking at my tits for? I'm not. You are. I can see you. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I know. They do look good, though. You know, price of beef. Uh, price of beef these days. The price of breast, beef. <laughs> Ch- chicken breast, beef breast. And we've been applying for Arts Council grants. It's been a fun time yeah, trying fingers to... Fingers crossed. Trying to, um, you know... It's not been a fun time. Well, it's a fun I kind of sit down and... Uh, I'm just one of those people where Reimagine like, oh, who we are. Good on the stage. Actually, if I someone out there, any of our me. listeners want to say to us... Who are the wild geese? <laughs> are you the so, goddess? <laughs> send us a little uh, sentence of what you would you think we are. Because apparently, what's that phrase? What people think about you is it's different. none of your business. <laughs> it's none of your business. That's true too. But no, also, everyone has a different version. Everyone of you has in a different head. version of you in their head. So, what's your Thank version you, of the wild geese? Send it along, please. Mm-hmm. All right. We were hanging out with Sharon, the historian oh, as Sharon, well. Yeah, she yeah. was telling us all about women in history. Yeah, we're going to do a bit on Sophie Pierce from Newcastle West, aviator. Everyone's getting on top of a athlete. British festival now as well. I know, and I was a Bridget freak before any of it. Like I said, Rita Bridgie <laughs> is for everyone, yeah, not just you. But um, anywho, should we tell them about our jobs? Okay. O-D-D-J-O-B. So our our odd job or weird gig um, today we want to tell you about is the time that we did our full cabaret show in Breda's local mm. um, county Ockram. No, County Galway, Ockram, Cartran. That's, like this, like that's this, my full this address. Is... Now you've given my whole oh, address sorry. away because Cartran, Ockram, Ballinasloe, and now sorry. everyone knows where I live. <laughs> Actually, people out there, there's a, it out. a new it festival out. in uh, Ockram, Ballinasloe. 
called Livestock happening in the start of July. First weekend in July. July. Blacksmiths and the uh, Kila and other tents. Oh, nice. And it's good crack, apparently. I wasn't there last year because it's warm. I was doing that. I feel like it's, it's such a country thing to like generalize where you're from. Do you know what I mean? It's like you say you're from Ballinasloe, but you're actually, how how far are you from Ballinasloe? Eight, like mi- eight miles. <laughs> so, that's the general all right, area. All right, Eminem. Right. <laughs> so, but yeah, the general area, but you're not from Ballinas now, are you? No, I'm not a townie. Ockram. But I'm not really from Ockram either. I'm actually oh. from the parish of Capitagal. Dead. Okay. I mean, the, the, not the parish. But that's equivalent to the location. Parish. And then the diocese is Clonfort. Diocese is actually written. Oh my God, you're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what Clonfort was written in the Irish Cultural Centre in Paris? Clonfort was one of the names written on the wall. And they had lots of Irish names like Innes and Shannon. And then they had Clonfort. Yeah, there's a Six Mile Bridge is a twin town with some place in France. Uh, every Irish town has a, has oh, a twin in France. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Isn't that nice, great? isn't it? Anyway, so the gig in, in Ockram. So it was a, a kind of an old country bar. But it's a typical you know, bar locals. lounge sort of old fashioned. It's actually for sale. It's on Daft, hasn't it? Oh, so if anyone has a spare half mil. Maybe we could all go nice in. Little, uh, investment, I'd say. We should turn start into a big gay bar. Say it to the queer cooperative. Yeah, yeah the queer try. cooperative, because you could live there. Eight people could buy that place and live in it. Everyone and have a bar, is, yeah. And like, not I much footfall it's, though. But it's the Battle of Ockrams there. I mean, its potential is massive. The Battle of Ockrams. It's, it's the bloodiest battle in the history of oh, Ireland. Yeah, sure. The the tourists would be flocking to Ockrams. Well, anyone now. that's into the history of, I mean, Sharon now would be great to talk about the Battle of Ockram with Jacobites, Williamites. Right. Like, Doesn't I mean, she specialize in industrialism? Just, well, she said she specializes in the in nineteenth century industrialism. Yes, but still. <laughs> And she can go back to the 16th century. She it? told me that the woman that used to run Cleary's, you know, Cleary's in, in town, in Dublin. Yeah. Um, was run by a woman for, like, until she was 101 years old. Really? Like, she was still signing the uh, signing off in the books, so she was 101. Mrs. Cleary? Yes, maybe it was Mrs. Cleary, yeah. Um, and then after she signed off, it all went to shit. Of course. Yeah. Held it all and together, then, a bit like the nuns in the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. She kept things tight. Oh, tight indeed. Yeah. It'd be very tight not having the fucking ride. But anyway, um, <laughs> sorry, I'm so horny. It's unbelievable. Um, I know, she's PMS again. I mean, no, seriously. major PMS. I, mean, yeah, do you know I got it in the week pink and pants. Laura seems to have period. I seem to have my period or be PMSing the whole month. But that's it though. Like she's a medical phenomenon. Nearly people. two weeks before. So like you only have like one week of ovulation is good crack. And then everything else is just, yeah. everything's jumping around. I get awful anxiety. So shout out to any of the women listening that, or any of the people, sorry, who uh, are listening who get their period. And you just get major anxiety. Like when we were doing the podcast last week, uh, uh, and when I was wearing the pink suit, I... I don't know, I got this... You remember? Mo- uh, yeah, I got this so moment. Suit. <laughs> I got this moment where I was just flooded with panic. and you're Flooded just- all right. <laughs> Thank you. I don't feel like this is a safe space <laughs> <laughs> for me to talk. By the rivers of Babel. Fuck you. Anyway. Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> cranky. No, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm blessed. But, um... Anyway, so back to Akram. So, mm. uh... So we put on our... our, our very queer cabaret and I don't think anyone in that town has ever seen a burlesque a village performer yeah town village potato potato but it is a small little village it's one little street in the middle of you it. know I just yeah no Valerie's is a nice uh, lounge pub and I thought you know what we'll put on a Christmas gig mostly because my sisters wanted me to do to bring the show to them because they're lazy and it was good but and at the same time, we we had to get dressed in the little bit outside, yeah. And then like we got dressed pop, in the pop in my heels and knickers through, through the, the smoking smoke area, area. <laughs> and like the lads were just like, Jesus, what's They're going like, on here? And we were like, Who are you? We're putting on a show, and like big massive blue feathers, and yeah. they were just like, What in the fucking hell is this? But it drew a crowd, I think. And then we were like, But doing- mostly my cousins and neighbors, yeah. But we were- it was just big, you know, big family, yeah. Rub it in, why don't you? And then we were <laughs> joking. Um, and then we were doing the show. It was going well. And then I just couldn't help but hear like some, like you know, some kind of old Irish farmer voice, just really loud talking throughout the whole thing. And I was just like, who the fuck is talking so much throughout the whole thing? And who was yeah. it? Daddy. 
Daddy. Daddy. I was like, Shawnee Nora, Larkin, shut Nora, your fucking hole down there. Nora went down with the microphone. I said, Daddy, she has a Roman microphone. She's not going yeah, to take any prisoners. And I was asking. And he was like, oh, uh, I wasn't saying sure. I was. Did you hear me down there all the way down the front? I was but, like, uh, how many tires do you throw up onto the silage pit, Shawnee? <laughs> how, uh, how strong are you these days? How many tires are you up to these days, Shawnee? With your big hands. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to her sisters who are listening. <laughs> Your dad has massive hands. Yeah, and a big dick. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I told you he doesn't wear pants. Oh Jesus Christ! You can hear it splashing into hear the toilet dragging water. Up the, dragging up the hall. <laughs> <laughs> I sleep across from into the, toilet the toilet water in the bungalow. <laughs> I sleep, and every morning he says, "I'm like talk." He talks about his bowels a lot. I'm like clockwork, you know, every morning I said, Daddy, I know because I can hear you You're every <laughs> single morning. Do I just close the door and wash yeah, your hands, by the, the way? Door. That's you as well, man. You always like kind of slagging <laughs> your dad. You are your father. You are Hopefully a one day. rural male farmer in yeah. a lesbian's what body. A dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in <laughs> the claw. I got that <laughs> eight inch in the closet. <laughs> I'm joking. So young and Mary But uh, no, it was a fun night. And, uh, you know, so Laura, the, the, when, you know, the, the lounge, you know yourself, the fun, the traditional bars, you, the, you go in and the, the bar is on the left and then the lounge is at the back. Well, there's like a but snug. The, yeah, but it's the same, the bar covers both. So, you know, right. people in the bar were not in the lounge, but they were wondering what was going on to the point, like they're all <laughs> squeezed together, <laughs> looking through the hole to see the show. It was brilliant. Like, I'd love to have seen, yeah, that'd be fun. like, a little photo of, like, the whole bar being relatively empty and then about four or five lads up, sat at the bar, l- literally squares shoulder to shoulder so that they could see through this small square into the lounge. And they were just wedged together looking in through and uh, the whole bar empty. It was so it was funny. Brilliant. Like, they gave, um, they gave us a tip, though, at the, the end. Yeah, because we were like, well, they're enjoying yeah. a free show there now. Yeah. We are slagging them. But uh, my neighbour still, when we're out... Because um, they can't be was seen to be buying tickets to go in, like, you know what I mean? They're just, oh, there happens to be something on here tonight, lads, wedged well, together no, because at the I think bar. it was a bit saucy and a bit racy. Yeah, but Raunchy. she wore harm. But for what harm is right. Their wives body, would have loved it. Body positivity. I remember one woman said that to me once. I was doing a gig in Killaloo. In, um... Killaloo. I can't afford to live in you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so God. It'll be out next year. Next year. I think it was Carl Spain that did that. Kill no, it was us. Oh. Uh, we did. We I heard that. Him. No, you heard it from me. No, I no, I made up the second part, but anyway. Um, yeah. No offense, Carl, but I, I also write jokes. <laughs> anyway. I joke. Um, yeah, a, a woman said to me, like I was doing stripping in the bar or whatever, and it was an older lady and she was a legend and she just like kept grabbing her husband and she was like, it's, um, what did she say? She was like, we're married 40 years today. We're married 40 years. And she just wanted me to give her husband a lap dance because it was their anniversary. Yeah. Did you? And I was like, you sweetheart, our goals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What a legend. But my neighbour And I did, still, yeah. I got up on top of his face. Did you? Yeah, yeah. But um like grinding you know, in the my field, crotch so and the neighbour you know, that was knocked at the, the paddy show, hat off him. The neighbour was at the show <laughs> is the farm right next door to us and when I'm in the field with Daddy last year, you know, we're just looking at looking at the land and he came across the he could see him and he came across the river, jumped over, like ran over his But when are you coming back? When are you coming back to when are you bringing the show back again? Best show I ever saw. Best show I ever saw. Let's do the farmer handshake. Do you give me an example of it. I'll be you. You be me. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm you. So you're the farmer. You have to give me the handshake. Oh yeah. The way you does it. Best show I ever saw. <laughs> what are you coming back? What are you coming back to? <laughs> what are you coming back? <laughs> to Best show I ever around. saw. And um. He came to Galway, we were doing the Galway Comedy Festival and he came along to our night when we were, we were just emceeing now in fairness and there was a shocking comedian. Oh on yeah, he was, was to meet, he was mad to meet mad Deirdre Cain. And Deirdre Cain was just happened to be there to see us and um, she was also, we were trying to chat Deirdre and be all coy and he was like standing literally behind me, sitting actually down in the chair and Deirdre was chatting to Deirdre and she kind of looked as in. And I said, oh, that man keeps Deirdre, this, um, <laughs> this is my neighbour Sean Madden and he's like, in with the handshake again. And he's like, 
<coughs> uh, what did he say to her? Um, I love Jeff to tell you, or, you know, something like that, you know, yeah. very funny. And then he took a selfie with her. I was like, what about me, Sean? No, no selfie. Just my titties. But um, yeah, so we would there, definitely girls. think there's a scope for bringing the shows around Ireland because country people love a laugh. Oh my you know? God, of My neighbours though, they loved it. Like, I mean, my jokes are filthy, you know yourself. Yeah, it's hard not to and love what we do. It's just good crack. And they really just like, you know, like hand up. All my f- school friends came, my cousins, my all sisters. All three of your school friends. The whole gang of them. All one of them. I'm yeah. <laughs> so it was, it was a very good night, I have to say. That was a long time ago now. We never came back. We we're supposed to go back with Carol, actually, and the COVID kind of cancelled. Well, that was to Banislow, the metropolis. Metropolis of Banislow. Mm-hmm. But they have a new um, cinema now in Banislow. Oh, Jesus. Mm-hmm. It's just opening now. I think this weekend I might go home for it. What are they showing? There's one screen, just, I don't know, Titanic over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just live streams from other people's farms. It's the West. And all the That'd farmers going in. <laughs> That'd be brilliant. I'd actually go to that. We're going in like, and, oh sure, I knew it was the, um, I knew it was Shawnee Larkin's sheep eating my fucking begonias. Daddy doesn't have any sheep anymore. So there. <laughs> Daddy well, was so the shearer. Actually, so. He's a shearer. He sheared every sheep in the land. Every, very good. Yeah, he was a shearer. He used to be the baler. <clears throat> he's having a bit extra income, you know. He's on the go all the time. He, he used to do square bales for people. So if you ever come see and us, the blacksmiths he used to fix the uh, make gates. He used to shoe horses. He used to, you know, do odd jobs. Or is he looking for work? No, or? That's what he used to do. <laughs> he did 150 sheep and 90 no, head of cattle. I mean, he's unbelievable. Yeah, he's still doing it now. Fag hanging out the mouth, no safety gear. Fucking yeah, big buzz like, saw just buzzing off the ground that day. And three extension leagues, three extension leagues. Like Fag in the, the mouth, breeder. And when he when he <laughs> took the calf out of the out of the cow's arse oh, out of her arse sorry out of her out of her the out China. of her key, out of her cow let's key. look at the chart again where do do they not come, come from the bottom of the cow <laughs> the mammals give birth okay but like the way he pulled it straight like fag in the mouth pulled yeah. the calf out put, took the stuff out of its mouth what a legend yeah. But anyway, so if you ever come to our show, like he myself, himself as well, when the cow is, he does, yeah. which is so di- with the placenta. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah, tastes good. That's a female. <laughs> <laughs> but um, a bitch right there. Uh, lift up our skirt and find out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if you ever come see us in one of our live shows or Stony Banter, which is in Cavanaugh's every month, but uh, uh, I go off and do a costume change quite regularly. And Brita has to hold down the fort, you know, We're doing a bit of comedy and ad living. And every now and again, she's trying out new material or whatever. And then she just, it was kind of quiet and there was a bit of a lull and Brita decides to talk about, uh, she was like, oh, I won't tell you a joke. I'll tell you this time. So my dad, um, the the sheep gave birth to a lamb and then the, and then the sheep killed the lamb by sitting on it. And so that lamb Excellent. died. And then that one didn't, was it the, sh- the lamb had no mother? Or there was a lamb on its own. It was own. another sheep that died. And oh, it was she, another sheep that died. Over, yeah. And she too. And then we they wanted the other sheep to accept the spare lamb. Good, yeah. So he skinned he skinned the dead, dead lamb, lamb and put the skin of the dead lamb on on the alive lamb so that the other mother would take to the lamb. And meanwhile I'm backstage like, oh no, like viciously <laughs> trying to put on my shoes. I'm like, she's fucking what and everyone in the audience was like, Oh, and she's like, so the moral of the story is like you kinda have to you know, no, shouldn't be wearing other people's was, skins to the be accepted. The story was what that lamb had to do to belong. Wear someone else's skin. Right. That was my moral story. <laughs> and then we were saying, when your when your pet dog died, <laughs> <laughs> you were saying, imagine he skinned the pet dog and put it on the new dog. And they were like, ask grand sisters, it's just to acclimatize the children to, <laughs> to accept the new dog. <laughs> So, you know, so Brita's like, I try to give up them fags. I have given up. So Brita's like, oh, this is your, this is your new dog, <laughs> Timmy. And he's Timmy. like, blah, with the other, <laughs> other dog's skin on. <coughs> Sorry. What? People cough, Laura. <laughs> Maybe it's a bit of reflux. I did eat a bit of bread earlier. It's those crisps. Brown bread goes down your throat. You shouldn't that, have had the crisps. down your throat. But yeah, but not, like, no, fair enough. Just saying about what anyway. we're saying about. Uh, farming and all that. It's a tra- well, I was trying to make it. It's good to tell the Dublin city folk that farming is brutal and they should appreciate well, what, what, what meat comes from. But I it's also beautiful, do. like when calves are born, but yeah. then they get ripped away from the mums pretty soon. That's dairy. 
Oh, okay. And actually, that's just conventional dairy. Michael's yours is yours is nicer. Yours is beef. Yours is like they get to hang out for a while and then get live, slaughtered. Yeah, well, <laughs> lived till about twenty eight months. Well, I can't be they, uh, I can't be saying anything like that. Now, I eat the beef. big the big man. What I was thinking. Oh, was, actually, have you from the last podcast? Have you eaten pork since we were talking about it? Be honest. Be honest now. Um. I may have eaten black pudding at home. Now, there it is, folks. You heard it here first. Yeah, but I'm going to give up pork. I didn't buy it, Because the Chinese it, have fucking 20 stories filled yes, with Yes, but pain. I didn't <laughs> buy it, so... So what if you didn't buy it? It was in the fridge at home, and I was hungry. I don't And know. it's already going to be <clears throat> eaten, so... No. It's already going to go... Whatever you say. And whatever, yeah. So, yeah, I'm a hypocrite. Sure, everyone knows that. I mean, Empty yeah. Thomas is my nickname. Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I will. I'll try harder, okay? That's okay. all I can do is try harder. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's all you can do. Yeah. Anyway, um, speaking of trying harder, <laughs> <laughs> should we do some Improv? self-care? Yes, I'll just get my banjo lily. Unreal. How are you in yourself? How are you in yourself? How are you in yourself? We're, We're talking, talking about your mental health. health. I'll do a little improv song. No, we're just... Laura. Still... Oh, yeah. So you... I give up pork. What were you going to do? I don't remember. Do you remember? Stop moaning. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. Laura still needs a girl. Oh, artificial sugar, I think. Oh, yeah? Well? No, I kind of no, failed yesterday. No, I saw you eat the cake. Well, I did. I, only yesterday. Yeah. I did really well until I then. I did it once, too. Huh? I only ate one sp- slice of black oh, pudding. That always, was it. I always bring it back to yourself. I can't have one one minute. Oh, you were giving me shit. I did it, too. It's like... As in, I did it. I also failed. Oh, sorry. That's what I mean. We are okay. both failures. That's my line. <laughs> <laughs> not both failures we just life is hard life is hard it is hard to keep up to your um but you need to walk the talk you can never be walk the talk walk the talk walk the talk you Hello? can't you know have to walk really fish. live your people like Wangari Matai you know Mahatma Gandhi they really live their truth that's why they were so sort of so inspirational yeah anyway so what does living your truth look like not eating pork right okay you know? And you can't even do that. Right, so <laughs> <laughs> just continue to live lies. Self-care is take it slow. Again, this is the general slow. Irish public. This That's is a good name, actually. Good, this is what game. you think. Can you think of slow, if rhyme self-care slow with something? Slow, rhyme slow with something. I met a slow. girl named Mo. She lived in a bungalow. She committed crimes and is now on death row. And then she became a homo. Very good, homo in the sky. Yeah. She lived well, you know, gave the stay, you know. She went to Mount <laughs> Joy and just started eating pussy. Sweet. Self-care is kissing your homies, a wank and a joint. Kissing your homies, I agree. Kissing your homies, Self-care is Minecraft Mondays. Mm. Nerd. Self-care is an all-over massage. Oh, from who? Have you ever had an all-over massage? Um, oh. From people, yeah. Professionally? Oh, professionally? No. no. Oh, really, yeah. Well, like Thai massage, yeah. I had a Thai massage once in, in Kinsale. I found it brutal. Yeah, to get just stuck in. Sore. I was nah, like, nah. I was like dying. I love her it. stop. No, I don't like it. I don't like yeah. pain. That's okay. why I can never get a tattoo. I don't like pain. Yeah, that's why people who do acupuncture, I'm like, oh, just get a massage. It's not sore. I don't like needles being stuck into. I don't mind needles really. I don't know well, the yeah, you won't get a tattoo. Elbow in the no, but like that, that's consistent needles for right. You know, that's like more than acupuncture. If you were to get a tattoo, what would you get? Bridges cross oh. on your arse, on your pubic bone, underneath cross, your pussy no. hair. I'd probably get mammy and daddy's face and one in each <laughs> cheek. <laughs> <laughs> Just one of those hearts. It says mammy and daddy. And then and I'll be like moon the place. So I want to remember daddy today. Dude. Pulled out my pants. <laughs> I'm like, 
Oh, you're immortalized, Daddy. You'll live forever in my arse. You should get like um a tree trunk on your thighs so that your fanny hair looks like the bush of a tree. <laughs> That'd be handy, wouldn't it? Yeah. And then shave off the pubic hair and put like birds in there. <laughs> and then when your hair grows back, it'll look like those birds living in the trees. Oh. Isn't that great? It's a good one. That's yeah. Good. I should be a tattoo artist. Yeah. Maybe I'll change that skills. one. I think it'd be we we got to retrain. Sore to get. It actually wouldn't be sore. I think the arse would probably be, be easy enough to get. It wouldn't be sore for getting on your arse. It? It's just on the bone, isn't it? Pubic bone, yeah. Well, just on the any bone where people. You know, I have one here, regret it, and I have one down there, regret it, and I'm in the process of getting rid of it. Yeah. Uh, but I, well, it looks like a Smurf dick. I think we spoke about we spoke this. About Smurf dick, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, uh, the source. Not that there's anything wrong with the Smurf the dick. Place? Like I'd like to put it out there to anybody who has a Smurf dick, that you know, no heat. Self care <laughs> is a load of bollocks. Oh shit! Okay. Controversial. Yeah. Self care is looking at boobs. Why you're gay? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. Self care is Connemara English. <laughs> what does that mean, Connemara? I guess you know they say bicycle for bicycle, bicycle. Do they? Yeah. Do you know, Do you know in Connemara they have a phrase: if you're going a bit mad, you're going to Dulshir, and that means you're going east. Hmm. It means going to Banlaslow. Oh Jesus! Yeah. <laughs> As the uh, asylum of the West. Accurate. The asylum of the West was in Banislaw. How are you in your how how are you in yourself? How are you in yourself? How are you in yourself? You're going into Banislaw. <laughs> Self care is this is a two parter. A face full of titties. Oh no, this is the same card. I'm going mad. I have PMS brain. A face full of titties. Self care is not caring about anyone else but you. That's uh, well, the age of enlightenment. That's putting what happened. First, People became very, and that is you know just individualized, only caring about me, me, me. That's the that's what we live in now. The age of enlightenment, where everyone just cares about themselves. Navel gazing. Well, yeah, there's me, a lot me, of me. selfies, a lot of, you know, but it's, it's, TikToks, it's detrimental to my, society, it's detrimental to communities, it's really detrimental to food security and food growth. And so it is. That's what we worked out. Uh, <laughs> we worked out the other night. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. You and the other fucking dinner goers while you were talking into your marzipan cherry mar maraschino shite and your fancy fucking lobster Ireland mackerel. Players. Yeah. What are you doing? Do you walk children in nature? Well, she said, "Actually, actually have one, actually one got a wood thing." I do. I, I'm wood. planted in woodland, but there's the woman, the dietitian said, "Yeah, like for example, like with the, the you know, what would you think of this? Now they went on a lovely like, to Wicklow Woods, to a lovely um Halloween, you know, like trick or or you know Halloween walk with the kids and everything. Uh -huh. And at every station All there was a bag of back, celebrations. Yeah. Oh, you know, she said, why do they need to have a box of celebrations at every single station? The kids now, the kids associate that." every station we're going to get sweets rather than you know actually it was a beautiful night and there was like lamps everyone decorated really well mm. but sure also sugar addiction is going to kill us right here we oh, go yeah. self-care is taking the time to think about what self-care is <laughs> it's quite a inception one All right one last one right, self-care is this show it's so good oh flattery nice. will get you everywhere this one Self care is ignoring hetty men. Petty men, it's no hetty with a H. What's Maybe hetero, men? heteronormative. Oh, Maybe ignoring hetty men. Yeah, ignoring them. Just you know. Yeah, you need to leave. You haven't met the right who, dick yet. If you could pick one heteronormative ma man off the telly to leave, who would it be? Or off the radio? Uh, I, Pick. I, your man off the late late. I'd get rid of him. Oh, Tuberty Tubbs. Yeah. yeah, me too. He's just Tubbs, he's had his you time. Need to he's leave. had, he's had like the idea is spending 30 years in showbiz. Like, yeah. you need to leave. What Adrian Truscott's to... show, Masterclass. Masterclass, basically. that's what it says. You need uh, to leave. Joe Duffy, you need to leave. And he's like, you need to leave too. And she was like, I will. I'm just right behind you. Yeah. Sorry, we're calling <laughs> out. Anyway, self-care is good times. Self-care is pledging to Dawn's Kickstarter. Please fund us. That was someone in the audience. Oh, that's a good one. A little self-promoter. Yeah. Who are you, Dawn? What do you do? Slip into our DMs, Dawn. We'll yeah, Dawn. We'll find out how listening. Kickstarter's going. If you're listening, we will support you. Women supporting women. This is a <laughs> self-care last one, so. Enjoying, self-care is enjoying life. Up the banner. Up oh, the yeah. 
Up the banner, up the nose. I think up the premier county, right, Aoife? Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Is that it? We one last one. On, one last one. Let's see if there's a good one. One last here. one for self care. This one, this it's one almost into January. Imagine it's still January. This, which is great. We're kicking ass. Right. This one is relatable. Self care is sitting on your arse and watching Netflix. How are you in yourself? How are you in yourself? Watch Netflix. How are you in yourself? I love Talk sitting on my arse. I talk about your mental health. <laughs> We're talking about your mental health. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening, everyone. We love you. See you next Tuesday. See you next Tuesday. And tune in and come to see our show on Stony Banter on the February 17th. Get your tickets now before they're gone.